Designs and Machine Embroidery. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to talk all about hooping with both magnetic hoops and our sticky hoop. So in today's program, you're going to be able to learn how to attach the rulers that come with the hoops. Also, uh, how to mark the centers, center horizontal and vertical on the bottom of a hoop, because you may want to do that. That's really helpful sometimes. Um, and we're going to hoop a, a onesie, some denim t-shirts, not denim t-shirts, some denim, a denim jacket and denim pants. And um, then we're going to do some t-shirts and, and quilt sandwiches and so forth. So hello. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. It's really great to have you here. Hello, Alicia. And uh, let's see, St Stephanie Hardy from Virginia. Great to have you here. We're working in a new platform today. So um, you're going to see your comments right there on the side, which is really helpful. And uh, we're going to stretch our skills here in this platform. We're learning this. Hello, Isabel Brian from France. It's so nice to have you here. Uh, so many of you ha have been watching every week and I'm really grateful for that. So if you want to know when we're going live, you know, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you will be notified when we go live, which is every Thursday at one o'clock. So at, after we talk about our hoops, we're going to show some of your small town charms, which many of you have been doing beautiful, beautiful work. It's so exciting. So let's head over to the overhead cam and take a look at what comes in, you know, at the box, right? If you go into a retail shop, this is what you'll see, the Snap Hoop Monster box. And I want you to take a good look at that green label because that's going to tell you the machine brand that it's compatible with and the size. It's the sewing field of the hoop. But as we lift that on its end, you'll also see the hoop compatibility chart. Now remember, your machine thinks this is a regular hoop. So if you ha already have a 6x10 standard hoop, that's what your machine thinks it is. Now, if you purchase it online from us, you won't have that sleeve. You will receive a white box, all of the same contents. And of course, you will also have the hoop identifying label. Again, tells you the size and all the compatibility. We try to keep that compatibility chart as current as possible. But if you are, you have a question, you most certainly could contact our office to find out if, um, you know, your, if you have a new machine or a new number machine that we're not aware of, um, then you can just let us know. And we'll check the compatibility for you. Open the box, you're going to find your hoop. You'll also have a set of instructions, a sheet of target stickers, and here's your rulers. So even though you already know how to use a if you do, and if you have, you know, if this is your second purchase and you think, oh, I don't need those instructions, well, that's where you're going to find your rulers. So make sure you don't throw that away. You open it up, and that's where your rulers are. So how do we apply the rulers? Well, here you can see I have that giant giant 10 by 10 and a half by 16 or whatever its dimensions are um hoop or baby lock brother and i have stitched the crosshair now you can find this crosshair on my blog and we'll run that link for you in a little bit uh at the bottom of the uh at the bottom of the screen but it <clears throat> it's simple and you you know it's a crosshair you're going to hoop tear away cut away stabilizer and stitch the crosshair in contrasting thread so you can really see it. Now you'll notice this is a small crosshair, it doesn't fit this whole hoop, it doesn't matter at all. So what I'm going to do is take a ruler and let's start down here on this end because I don't have that thread tail there. And I'm just aligning my ruler with that stitched line. And then I'm going to take a Sharpie and draw it all the way out. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Let's ignore that thread. I should have cut that tail, oh well. And again, I'm just you know using the quilter's ruler, the edge of that ruler to get a nice straight line. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the horizontal, which is actually vertical in this window, but you know on the machine it's horizontal. And there we go, I can just draw right across. Now I know where those center marks are out on the frame. So I can take my adhesive ruler and I like to position it with the lines 
inside. Now there's no right or wrong, but whatever you do with the first ruler, do for all four rulers. And then I'm just gonna remove that protective paper and align that zero with my marked center on my stabilizer. And there you have it, right? And I'll do the opposite side, same thing. And again, I'm lining up that zero with that marked line and <clears throat> press in place. It's as easy as that. Now on the horizontal, let's see how much we're gonna cut off because they are longer than you need. So I'm gonna trim this down to about 15 on both ends. And then I have to um, start the, you know, the pull off that protective paper. <laughs> there we go. And again, I'm going to put that zero at that mark. You most certainly could use our laser, our perfect alignment laser, if you have that, to do this same trick. Instead of using the marker, you would just align that crosshair with the beam, and then you would know exactly where you um, would place that zero. So this one, I've already started the edge, so I'll just go ahead and peel that off and apply it and then trim. So there's no right or wrong. You can do it either way by pulling off the, paper, the protective paper first or not. Again, I'm gonna trim that at the 15. And there you have it. Now my rulers are in place and I'm ready to use that hoop. Now, what would I do with that giant hoop? Well, to me, that's my quilting hoop, right? So let's go ahead and watch it over on the weightless quilter so you can see how, um, how that monster hoop works, that giant mon monster hoop works on a quilt. Look at that big expanse. Now this quilt is only, you know, that's only a width of fabric, 45 inches wide, and it's two yards, so that's 72 inches. Boy, but in that giant hoop, I could probably quilt that entire quilt in about, you know, maybe two hours, maybe three hours. I mean, that's a really large sewing field, and I'm probably only going to have to re-hoop three, maybe four times across the width of the fabric. Judy Whitaker, you want to know if it's uh, possible to purchase extra rulers? Yes, it is. We have them for sale on our website, and they're very reasonable. Abs absolutely so much. So, I mean, so, so reasonable. Uh, okay, so I'm going to let you watch that a little bit. I'm just always fascinated by the weightless quilter, isn't it? I love to watch how it just kind of wiggles and, and moves around, stays out of, keeps everything out of harm's way. Okay, so let's now move on to a four by four hoop. <clears throat> and you'll notice that every hoop, when you open your box, every hoop has what we call a magnetic shield. And that's this corrugated plastic that lives in between the top and bottom frame. It's a good idea to store your hoop with that in place because it makes it easy to separate the top from the bottom. And you can, you know, hang this on a hook. I mean, it's a, you know, helpful tool. It's also great for transporting the hoop. And I'll show you that in a moment. But now maybe you'd like to mark the bottom of your frame. You don't really need rulers for that, but I'm gonna show you what I would do. I would place my uh, top frame on the bottom frame, but not aligned at the top. And what I'm doing here, I'm gonna put this so we don't have too many lines to confuse you. I'm going to then take um, a Sharpie, that a permanent marker, and I'm just gonna make a mark that's aligned with this zero. And so when I do that, you know, I know that that's going to be marking the center vertical of my hoop. And then I'll do the same thing right to left. And I just keep an eye on, make sure that I am aligned top and bottom because that's what's going to give me uh, the proper center mark. And I probably have my head right in that camera, didn't I? Okay, same thing here. Now I know if I'm, you know, if I need to find the bottom, if I'm going, I mean, the the centers of the bottom frame if I'm using PAL or something like that. It's just really handy to have that. Okay, why don't we hoop left chest. Uh, I have a t-shirt that's already marked with a template and I have 
our no-show mesh fusible is applied to the wrong side of the t-shirt. Now I have a couple ways that I can hoop this. And the one that I most often do is I just lay the garment flat, already have that stabilizer in place, and then I work the bottom frame into the shirt. I'm gonna move this out of harm's way. And I could just feel the edges, you know? I mean, the shirt's a slightly translucent, so I can see um, underneath or through it. And then I just place that on top. That's pretty good. And because this is a flat hoop, I can pull that fabric and make it nice and taut. It has that no-show fusible on it, so I know I'm not going to uh, stretch out the fabric, and I'm also not going to distort the fibers. Now, to go to the machine on a flatbed machine, I need to turn this garment inside out. So I'll just lift everything up over the hoop itself. I even turn those sleeves wrong side out because I don't want to catch one of them in uh, the frame or in the stitching. And then I have my magnet shield underneath and that's how I transport my hoop to the machine and of course I'm going to flatten all of this out to bypass the needle and then open it up and then you know this is a big adult shirt so I don't have to worry about that falling into this into the sewing field super easy right okay let's see I'm reading some of your questions my instructor said to position zero in the center of every center. Okay, not sure what that means. Let's see. I know some of you didn't know how to put them on. You put them on incorrectly. They are very uh, inexpensive to replace, so you might want to do that. I don't spend, you know, I don't, well, I don't use the centering marks all that often, but that's my situation. Okay, let's talk about a onesie. These are so popular to make for newbies, toddlers, and the like but they could be a challenge to hoop. Um, so let's, I already have my placement center chest. You know, you don't often do left chest like on a onesie because the chest is just so tiny, right? So you're gonna do center chest. And I have fused my no-show fusible to the wrong side. And hey, by the way, all stabilizer at Dime is on sale this week, 20% off all stabilizers. Hoops are on sale all month but stabilizers just this week. Okay, so I have that marked. I'm now going to turn it wrong side out. So here you can see, this is the front of the garment, the wrong side, and I'm gonna plate, and this is what I'm calling the design area, right? The, the right side of that. So I'm gonna place that design area right down on the hoop. And because I now have those centers marked on my hoop, I can kind of line up that center vertical center and then I'm going to take my magnetic top I'm going to attach a hoop guard to the front of the hoop now hoop guard is sold separately and it just snaps right into place the channel is the same dimension as the magnetic frame so it just stays right in place not going to fall off love that thing okay so now I'm going to insert this through the neck and Immediately, of course, you can hear it snap down. So I could separate it a little bit. And then I can peek inside and see how close I am. Not too bad. And then just pull this over. And there's my sewing field exposed. When I go to the machine, I flatten this out. Really, I would take it like this, bypass the foot and the needle, and open that up, center my needle, well, rotate my design and then center my needle over that target sticker and I'm ready to roll. I love hoop guard and a four by four hoop for that very reason. That just takes all the guesswork out of it. On a multi-needle machine, of course, they're super easy to use, but if you have a flatbed only and you have to do onesies, that's an easy way to do it. And again, because you have that fusible no-show on the back of the garment, and you're in a flat magnetic hoop, you don't have to worry about any fiber distortion, which is awesome. Okay, so let's see, let me, I'm gonna move on to a bigger hoop to a five by seven. So I'll just move that out of harm's way and bring up some items for the five by seven. So let's start with 
this denim jacket. And what I want to show you on the denim jacket is, now I did buy, a, well, I didn't buy, but I took them out of the warehouse, extra rulers to mark on the bottom, attach them the same way, um, just really handy to have. So here's a, a denim jacket, and these are a challenge, right? Because we have rivets and snaps and metal buttons. We have multiple layers of fabric, all these um, felted seams, pockets, and so forth. So you would lift the pocket, uh, in the pocket bag in the back and pull it away from the design area. And I, on this, I would probably use a cutaway fabric, I mean, a cutaway stabilizer like our no-show fusible because, um, you know, denim can be stretchy, whether you purchase the kind that is stretchy or even, you know, regular 100% cotton, cotton denim is stretchy because it's, uh, it has, the weave is with three threads and, you know, the, the jeans you put on in the morning are a lot tighter than they are at five o'clock, right? So on a um, magnetic hoop, now we do have to get these buttons out of the way, but when I place this in position, I can ride right over all of that the multiple layers of fabric. I can pull this fabric nice and taut and make sure it's flat in the hoop. I don't have to worry about all these ridges. I mean, you could never do that in a standard hoop. So that's one way to attack uh, denim jackets. Really super easy to do. All right, so let's pull that away. And, and then I have jeans. So we have a couple ways to look at blue jeans. So here is a pant leg that I have already opened. And I want you to see that I haven't opened it all the way. I leave it at the hem a little bit because then I don't have to worry about closing that at the hem. You know how messy that can get, right? So I have opened this up just above the knee. You have to remember, you're going to have to be able to... Um, you know, to close it up later on. So you don't want to go too high. So on these, I, I didn't do this, but I would have fused the no-show mesh and extended it beyond the design area, probably, so that it would definitely be captured within the hoop itself. And then I'm going to flatten all this out and take my metal frame, I mean, my magnetic frame on top and just position that inside. I want to make sure I only have one layer of denim. There we go. Now, we have lots of ways to rotate designs. I'm a little low, so let's separate that and pull these jeans up. There we go. Now I'm clearing that. See, you don't have to be a really good hooper. <laughs> is that such a word? It is an embroidery, right? Because, you, you know, you can pull on the fabric. I mean, in a standard hoop, we're forbidden to do that, right? We're tempted, but we're really not supposed to. But in these hoops, these flat magnetic hoops, so strong, so dependable, and so flat that they won't distort the fabric. And of course, I would just center my needle over that target stick, I mean, over that template, which is printed on our print and stick target paper, remove that. And of course, it's reusable, so I can reuse that as many times as I want. Now, let's move over to a larger hoop. I'm going to go to a eight by eight. This is a really popular size hoop. So let's take a look at the eight by eight. This is a 200 by 200, and that comes, uh, is available for Baby Lock and Brother, Foth and Viking, and also Janome. So, um, it, it, you know, it, it's very versatile. I originally always thought about it with quilt blocks, but actually for a lot of garments, it's really very handy also. So let's go ahead and take a look at a t-shirt. This is a big design. This is a design from our friends at Embroidery Library. Um, and it looks great in metallic, says shine on. And of course, again, you're going to see, you know, on lots of garments, I'm going to use that no-show mesh, that fusible no-show mesh, because it, it's just comfortable next to the skin. It eliminates the stretch in the fabric. And once the embroidery is complete, I can heat it up to reactivate that adhesive again and loosen it so that I can trim that excess stabilizer. Okay, so I'm going to, now this is a big hoop, so I'm probably going to insert this from the bottom. And I'll 
place the attachment through the waist. This always sounds like this is gonna be so easy when I'm preparing it. There we go. And there we go. So now, because I have my centers marked on the bottom hoop, I could just kind of eyeball that and see how close I am. You know, I'm gonna be able to perfect that later on, right? So I don't have to worry about it too much and I can feel my frame. So I have a little bit of leeway that way. And then I'll just take that top frame, place it over the metal bottom, keep my hands out of the way, and then pull and tug on that fabric, make sure it's nice and uh, wrinkle free. And again, we are definitely going to nest this whole shirt above the, the hoop itself. So I have my, I'm inserting my hand inside. And when I do this, I'm holding on to, here I want you to see, I'm only holding on to the frame. Look at the back, I'm only holding on to the frame. I'm not putting my hand underneath this design area because that's gonna dislodge the fabric. And so this is when you really have to be careful with the hoop, when you are manipulating the garment at this time. After you get that all set, you can go ahead and put that magnetic shield underneath that T-shirt. And now when you go to the machine, you don't have to worry about dislodging anything uh, you know, your fabric from the hoop. So again, I'm gonna flatten all this out. Now here's my attachment and it's actually gonna go onto the machine in this fashion, right? So this is gonna be the, uh, the bottom of the hoop and I'll bypass the needle and so forth. And then I'll just open everything up. Could I use a hoop guard here if I wanted to? Uh, um, we don't use the hoop guard on the same side as the attachment we would put that on this side. It's always opposite the attachment. But you know, this is a, a woman's large or extra large ample open area. I wouldn't really worry about that falling into place. You could clamp, you could pin, but I don't know, I've stitched a dozen of these, not really that big of a deal. Okay, now let's look at a, uh, what is the design printed on? Jessica Steggers wants to know. Well, the design, that paper is, our print and stick target template paper. So it's sticky, it's translucent, and it goes right through both a laser printer and also an inkjet printer. It, they are really, really handy. You use them for everything, quilting, for garments, you name it. Okay, so let's, uh, oh yeah, I wanna do a, a sweatshirt. So uh, let's take a little look at this sweatshirt. It has just one design element on the garment, and that's that uh, top stitch seam that goes across the back yoke. So if you're going to put lettering on a garment that has a design element like that, that so when you wear a, a shirt with a horizontal line on it, that's what the eye uses as the alignment, right? The placement guide. So do that, use the, base of the, of the design or the text and sit it right on that top stitch line so it creates a baseline for your text. You know, and where's this from? Probably Target or something like that. Now, is this perfectly horizontal, is horizontal on the garment? Eh, it might not be, right? It's from Target. Don't worry about that. Worry about aligning it with that mark. That's what everyone's gonna look at. And so again, we are going to insert that bottom frame into the uh, shirt via the, the waist. And I'm gonna pull that attachment out of the neck. And when I do that, because I have hooped, uh, I have marked my bottom hoop. Let me get this in the frame so you can see. Because I have that mark on my hoop, I can see that I'm pretty well aligned, right? With that vertical center of the garment. And then I'm just gonna drop this in place. I wanna make sure that I have everything aligned and I'm gonna use that top stitch line and make sure it is hitting the ruler at the same point on both the right and the left. And it is, it's just at like just under that 2.5. That's all I care about. I really don't care about whether that's inches or metrics. I just want it to hit at the same line. So now I know 
when I stitch this and take this to the machine, as long as I align my needle with the center of that template, then it will stitch square on the garment. And again, I'm gonna turn that all right side out, uh, uh, no, wrong side out. And I'll use that uh, magnet shield to protect the garment as I move it across the sewing room. Okay, so let me see some of your questions. Does the stabilizer on these shirts need to only cover the design or does it need to be as big as the hoop? St Stephanie, it should be as big as the hoop. It's always a good idea to fill the hoop with stabilizer. In fact, you want the stabilizer to extend, you know, about an inch and a half on all four edges. I know we're often tempted to skimp on stabilizer, but that's really what gives the, um, the garment, the project, the foundation that it needs to stitch on. So definitely you wanna make sure that you um, fill that in there. Let's see. Okay, now are there other questions I should be checking out here? Uh, yeah, Judy Whitaker, you love that print and stick paper that it works on lasers. Yeah, me too, I do too, but also the ink jets. I mean, you know, I, the printers at home, uh, they're a daily nightmare, right? I, see, I, I wonder if, if there's gremlins in my house that on the day I have to work at home, that I'm working at home and I have to print a couple templates, the printer doesn't want to cooperate, but we get through it, don't we? So let's see, can you add, or should you add stabilizer after stitching to eliminate the bobbin thread from causing itching? Yes, um, but I do that, so take it out of the hoop, obviously, and trim the excess stabilizer, and then I apply a layer of Fuse So Soft, which is our um, Trico interfacing, it's like a Trico interfacing. I cover the bobbin work with that. I do that on you, most certainly all children's garments and also my own garments, you know, if it's gonna be right next to the skin. I don't really bother with like denim uh, jackets and so forth, but t-shirts, absolutely. And let's see, and OMG, Dana wants to know, does this monster food hit, uh, fit Brother Quattro 2 6700D? Yeah, we have tons of hoop, for your, ho hoop sizes for your Quattro. Everything from the four by four up to the nine and a half by 14. I think, Dana, if you're Quattro takes a nine and a half by 14 standard hoop, then you can use ours. Let's see. And Steph's, you use the remaining stabilizer for smaller things like the four by four hoop stuff. Brilliant. It's exactly what you should do. Definitely. Okay. So let's move over to, if you have any more questions about monster hoop, make sure you post them. I'm happy to answer them, but also let's move over to um, sticky hoop because that's a, a whole different concept, right? And that's just stabilizer based. So sticky hoop is, um, it's also recognized by your machine. This is the one for a uh, five by seven baby lock brother who takes um, a different kind of hoop than the ones that I've been showing. This just snaps down. And it comes with 25 sheets of peel and stick adhesive stabilizer. It's a tear away, great stuff. All right, so let's take a look at marking, um, adding the rulers for that. So you are going to stitch the four by four design on your uh, sticky stabilizer. Oh yeah, first I wanted to show you how to apply that sticky stabilizer. Um, and let me get a board. If you just hang on one minute, maybe show them the weightless quilter so they can see that. And I'm gonna put this board here so that you can just mimic, a, you could use a, the edge of your table. And basically what you wanna do is turn your hoop over, right? Your, your uh, sticky hoop and position it so that this attachment is laying off the edge of your table. So you see my hoop is nice and flat on this surface and that attachment's hanging off my table. That, that's what I'm trying to do for you. And then you're going to take a piece of the um, adhesive stabilizer that comes with it and you're going to place that. I actually don't think I really want to do that right now, but we'll see. And so you're going to place the protective paper, the shiny side up, 
underneath the hoop, right? Place that right there. And then take your sticky stabilizer and place that on the back. And because you have that protective paper, now I already had a piece of stabilizer on this hoop, so imagine if you were doing this without that. And then that's there to protect that until you know, you're ready to hoop. So then you go to the uh, machine and you stitch that crosshair, which you can download, download from my blog. And again, if you feel that you need the marks to be closer to the edge, feel free to, um, to do that. And we are going to cut some of these down because we know they're not going to need all that distance. So we'll cut that at the eight. And once you have these in place, you know, they're not going to come off. You're not going to uh, have to reapply these. Now, when you are removing this, the sticky stabilizer from the back of this hoop, you know, you just want to use Gooby Gone, and you want to do that so that uh, you don't mar, you don't wet these uh, stickers on the top, because you'll want to protect that from that goo, that Gooby Gone. That's what I use to remove um, the excess stabilizer from the back. And you know what? I'm going to come up in this fashion. I'm going to cheat this way. So now I'm just aligning my vertical line on my ruler with that stitched line. And I'll just make sure that that's aligned with my ruler. And there we go. And you're going to do that on all four sides, OK? We don't need to do that again. You've already seen me do that. Same idea, very same idea. So now, what are we going to use that for? Well, it's great for things that you absolutely can't hoop, like you know, a jewelry case or a cosmetic case like this. You can't get that in a hoop. So now, when I go to the machine, now this comes with a board underneath. You know, this you don't get rid of that because you'll use that board as a device to transport your hoop. And I do have one here behind me from a bigger hoop. But that's how I would transport that to the machine. And again, you're going to position your needle right over that target sticker. Now, when you apply an item like this to the hoop, don't you know inadvertently do it this way because that's how you're going to have to try to clear the foot, right? So make sure that all the business of a case like this is in the front of the hoop, so you never have to bypass the machine, uh, the needle and the foot. Okay, so that's kind of a fun uh, thing. I love those cosmetic cases. They make great fast gifts, don't you think? And then what else? Do oh, I wanted to get those denim jeans and show you how you could do a pocket, which is very difficult to hoop. So let's go ahead and show you how I would use a sticky hoop for this. So here I have a template already positioned on my pocket. And let's talk about that. So now remember, when you are stitching pockets that are already on a garment, you're going to have shifting layers of fabric. So as the needle travels around this design, it's going to push this pocket as it travels down in this area. And you may have puckering between your embroidery and the bottom of your pocket. So what you should do, well, you have two choices. You could remove the pocket. Ugh, who wants to do that, right? Or you can just fuse this shut. So use some fusible web like our Fuse Me and put that inside, fuse it permanently closed. You're going to lose the use of the pocket, but 99% of women don't put anything in their back pocket, so that's not a problem. And then just use your sticky hoop to center that template over it and then transport it all to the machine. Now, of course, when you're doing that and you're at the machine, you're going to have, just like a quilt, you're going to have to maintain all this bulk, right? You're probably not going to use a weightless quilter for that, but most certainly keep this up on the machine bed so that it's not falling down and uh, falling apart on you. So, because that will pull out of the hoop. All right, I think we kind of covered everything. Let's see, is there a sticky hoop for Husqvarna Viking and Designer Epic? I believe there's a 120 by 120, yes. And you got rid of your board from your sticky hoop. 
Yeah, well, I understand why you would. You'd think it was packaging trash, but you know, hoops are, you know, they're holes, right? They're frames. And we're putting a, a delicate material, fabric, in, in that frame. And then we're going to transport it. No matter what project you're working on, you're almost never hooping at the machine unless it's a quilt, right? And we're rehooping right there. And does the sticky replace the monster block? No, it does not. The sticky, that's a whole different topic that we should talk about, though. Charlotte Turner is asking about our block maker, which is really a template that goes on top of a frame. So it's it's pretty different. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Is there a target, target template web address for the stitch out? Yeah, so you can go to www.dzgns uh, slash blog. And when you get over to the blog, just in the search field, search adhesive rulers, and you'll come up to the blog post that gives you step-by-step -step instructions of what I just showed you. And also that's where you'll find the link to download. And, um, and possibly you could also find it on a DZGNS on the main page over by hoops, but I couldn't swear on that, I'm sorry. It's not in my job description. Let's see. Um, and we do, do we have sticky hoops for the Persona 100? We don't have sticky hoops yet for the multi-needle. You know, we call the Persona a multi-needle hoop, but it's a tubular machine, right? Just like a, a multi-needle, meaning it does not have a flat bed machine. So that's what we mean when we say a tubular machine, for those of you who aren't quite uh familiar with it. And uh, Sandra Sanders, there is definitely a magna hoop for your flourish. So if you go over to DZGNS and there's a up in the, you can search for a compatibility chart and it will give you all of the hoops that are compatible with your flourish. But know that whatever hoops came with your machine, we most likely make a magnetic hoop in that very same size. And if we do, it will work with your machine. Mm -hmm. Do you use a special needle to keep it sticking to the sticky back? Crystal Campbell, we have not had um, issues with gumming up needles with our sticky. Now it is an adhesive. So if you're doing a really stitch intensive design, you could possibly encounter that. But we, we use our Triumph needles and we match our needle to our fabric. So, um, hey, you want to see some small town charms? Should we do that? Because I know some of you have uh, some beautiful ones out there. But first, just a reminder, all stabilizers are on sale this week, 20% off. Hoops are on sale through the end of this month. So take advantage of it. Absolutely. Okay. So as you know, small town charms have been, start we started in January. This was the January block. And then in February, we did a sweet shop and a dress shop, the outdoor cafe. We did an April um, a florist. And then let, this month, we did the town hall. And some of you, I mean, everybody who's posted has just done an absolutely fabulous job. So this is my versions, right? The five by seven and the seven by 12. And truth be told, I have to admit, you know, I make these and then when I see yours, I'm kind of embarrassed at mine. I'm like, wow, I should have done this. I should have done that. Everybody goes off in such great directions. It's just inspiring. So please keep it up. So let's see yours. Here is Cheryl McCombs. Oh, stunning. Just stunning. I mean, she added clouds. She's got a kite, a butterfly, a tree. And she quilted the background. I mean, it, it's just lovely. She added kind of a landscape. She pieced two fabrics together, the grass and the sky. Yeah, let's see. Oh, and Retha Ra uh, Ranke, you said you missed May's. You do, you have to go get it. You absolutely do, it's still up there. And um, Sybil, you said the town hall is your favorite. You know, I see several, I mean, several people have said that, that the town hall is their favorite. And Crystal Campbell, you're saying you don't see anything again. It's not showing up. So bear with us just a moment. Maybe we'll, 
maybe we'll pull out of um, Sam, maybe we'll pull out this PowerPoint and then come back in. Yeah, they're not seeing the charms. They're not coming through. So just bear with us a moment while we get this tech. Uh, there it is. Okay, so now we're back. Awesome. So Cheryl McCombs, right? This is her. I know this is her creation. Isn't it wonderful? There's so much movement in hers. The kite string, right? That's adorable. That just looks fabulous. And her tree, she used kind of a mosaic print which is adorable. And I think her clouds have, have mylar. I'm not sure, that wasn't in the notes, but it kind of looks like it. Very well done. Chris Yost, she's got a hot air balloon and the sun shining in the sky. She's got a couple animals here. Let me pull that down so that um, you can see her, her background. Oh, how do I do that? Oh. Sam, how do I get that off? Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, so you can see she's got, I think it's a kitty cat and a, and a puppy uh, in the foreground. Isn't that awesome? Really, really well done. Yeah, I know. Stephanie Hardy, you love that sky on Cheryl's Town Hall. I, I, I agree. It's great. Okay. And here's Donna Brayton and she's got a Canadian flag. Um, flying from her town hall. And so many of you did the dome in copper, which was a really great idea, really lovely idea. I like how she used her contrasting thread. She's got a woman in the foreground and a kitty cat. She also added a couple of trees or like small shrubs under the windows. Very nice. And then Seth Sweets and Stitches. Oh yeah. That looks awesome. The fabric is so real. Now, if you don't know these, if you're not familiar with these embroidery designs, the brickwork, the brick detail that you see is part of the embroidery design itself. You know, that's stitches. So you don't have to hunt down brick fabric, but if you choose a fabric like Seth did here, and she, you know, kind of a, a brick tone, it really does look like, um, brickwork with a uh, light colored martyr. Very well done, just beautiful. And I like that red, white, and blue flourish that she added underneath the clock. Yeah, I know, let's see. Oh, and Teresa, you, Randolph, you have a qu question. Can you do edge to edge quilting with this hoop? Well, Teresa, truly it's the only hoop to do edge to edge quilting in. I mean, because and we can go back over to the weightless quilter and I'll show you how to advance a quilt. And you'll do that right under the needle. You won't take that bottom frame off. So if you've been doing edge to edge quilting with a standard hoop, and let's say you're doing a quilt that's 55 inches by 72 inches, you're probably doing about 55 hoopings. That means you took your quilt and your hoop off your machine 55 times and also put it back on 55 times. Let me show you how you will not do that on a magnetic hoop. So if this design had just be, been completed and let me get out of harm's way, out of the camera way, and I would just lift that frame and place that top frame right over the head of the machine now I'm at a weird angle here. And then I just advance my fabric to the next hooping. And then I drop it down. Now I most certainly would be using a template. Like I have one here, right? I, I would have placed that in the proper position and moved my needle to that. And actually I can show you how to do that right now. Why don't we do that? So what I would do is I have that up over the head of the machine and then I just move that fabric and I kind of eyeball it, make sure I'm somewhat right on that line. And then I drop that in place and I can use my navigation, where's my frame? I can use my navigation keys to uh, move that needle so that it is centered right over that uh, template and I'm good to go. And I, that's how I rehoop 55 times on a hoop, on a quilt that size. So yeah, they are really the only way. Okay, Dory Hobson, you wanna know where do people find all the neat tiny stuff to add on? Well, my friends over at OML Embroidery, they offer a free sew along every Saturday morning after the reveal of the small town charm. So I reveal 
a new design on the last Thursday of the month. And then uh, on two days later, OML Embroidery on YouTube does a free sew along. And they often give away to anybody who's watching some minis that they add on. Other people, like I believe, um, let me flip back here. I believe Cheryl McCombs found a lot of these designs in her Solaris, if I remember her notes correctly. And truth be told, if you've been following along with the Small Town Charms and last year's Doors, there were a lot of minis included there that people have been pulling from past designs and adding to new designs. So that's been quite fun. Um, and, and I do some of that myself. So let's see what other questions. Is there free shipping on the magnetic hoop? Well, let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm, I think there is. It's in there. There we go. Free shipping. So not only are they on sale this week, there are also um, free shipping to the U.S. Let's be clear with that. Judy Whitaker, you get many of your mini designs on Etsy. And Judy Warren, Aloha, she wants to, she's asking Seth, Sweets and Stitches, where did you get that U.S. flag? So, Seth, answer her. <laughs> okay, wasn't that fun? I love those hoops. Boy, I'll tell you, I've been embroidering almost 25 years, and I can tell you that that probably would have ended at about year 15, maybe year 12, if I didn't invent the magnetic hoop. There's no way I could hoop all the embroidery that I've done over the years, and especially all the quilting with my embroidery machine that I've done with a standard embroidery hoop. To me, flat magnetic hoops, lift that top, drop that back down is so easy. Oh, Susan Sargent says, this is a daft question, but will the magnetic hoop affect the machine's computer? No, and let me show you why. So we'll head back over to the overhead, and let me just clean up here for a second. I'm a little messy. You should see what it looks like after these um, after these programs, and then I'm going to find my four by four hoop and a pair of scissors. Okay, so here is the magnetic hoop, right? This is an older version. So on the new hoops, you don't see the magnets; they're covered in the teal uh, material. I can show you that right here. So I don't want you to think you got a hoop here. So let's just stick with this one. This is uh, the top you can see. Now, what's the difference between the top and the bottom? The bottom has a little notch on two corners. You see that? That's for you to insert your thumb when you want to separate the top from the bottom. So the top is completely teal when you receive it with no notches on the corners. The bottom has the notches. You can place a pair of scissors there and you can see that they are magnetic, right? It's not magic. I'm not, you know, holding it on there. And then when we take it off and put a piece of uh, fabric with it, let's go ahead and do that. I'll just, I'm not going to hoop the whole thing. Um, I got to find the bottom, which is right here. I'll just place this over it. And then we put that metal, the magnetic top. And then when I tried to put the scissors there, they won't stay. They, you, can, you can hear them snapping on, onto that metal, but they won't stay. So that magnetic field is stopped by the metal base. And so that means that magnetic field is not going into your machine or any of the sensors that are below the machine plate. And also, on the head of the machine, like over here at the weightless cooler where we are on the machine, you know, look how giant this ta this screen is, right? So this is almost like an iPad. It's so large. And, you know, when these embroidery machines first came out, now not the Solaris, but when a home embroidery machine was first available, our cell phones were in a tote bag that were like that big, right? That's where your cell phone was. Today, your whole world is in your back pocket in your or in your handbag. And so the brain of this machine is about the size of your thumbnail. It's inside a highly insulated area. Those magnets are not going to hurt at all. In fact, on the Solaris, there's magnets in the top. 
this is a magnet that snap or the, the magnet is here and this metal it connects to it so that that lid snaps in place so we're not the only ones who use magnets mm -hmm. let's see all right I think I've answered all your questions. So folks, thanks so much for joining me. Next week, we're gonna talk about lace, jewelry. We're also gonna talk about um, a, 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 an event that happened here locally. I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Texas, and we had a uh, one of our favorite sewing machine retailers in Denton, which is just a little north of Dallas, uh, had a fire in, in their building and have, um, completely burnt and I'm going to share their story with you. They are still open, which is great because they had a classroom in a separate building. So they've converted that space to the retail space and the storage area that they had there to their offices. So next week we're going to, you know, talk all about them and you'll see some upsetting photos of what happened, what happens to a, an embroidery machine when it um, is in a fire. But you also hear about a really heartwarming story that has occurred because of that fire. And a local quilt shop in nearby Aubrey, Texas is um, hosting a weekend called Heart to Heart, all to benefit their competitor in a way, maybe not, not really. One sells machines, the other one sells um, uh, fabrics. So anyway, I hope you'll join me because there's a great opportunity for you to participate in, um, in winning a, a singer featherweight, a white one. So anyway, we'll have fun next week and we'll see you at one o'clock next week.